Hey, what's up, guys? We have Chris Washburn here. He is a poker player and a DJ. And so, Chris, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, Micah, thanks for uh, having me on here. And hopefully we can help build up your show and uh, get more listeners and just continue to help have you produce some good content. So, yeah, pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, like you said, Chris Washburn. I go by DJ Washburn. It's more of my stage name, performance name. I live in central New York, Ithaca, New York. Finger Lakes area, if you're not familiar, it's uh, if you've seen the movie Road Trip, it's in there. Uh, Cornell University is in Ithaca. And uh, so I grew up in upstate New York, Plattsburgh, New York, and then went to college here in Ithaca back in 2004. Uh, pretty much after college, I've stayed since. Had a little stint out in Vegas, which you mentioned me being a poker uh, into poker and DJing. Uh, yeah, so I'm not a professional poker player, but I would definitely be a professional DJ. That's what I do full time. I DJ as well as run my entertainment DJ company that's a small multi-op, which just means we have multiple DJs on staff. We do a lot of events all over central New York, sometimes the, over the country, depending on the, the clients and whatnot. But uh, you know, we do a lot of weddings, corporate events, school dances, bars, clubs, stuff, uh, all that kind of th type of thing. But the way poker comes into that is... I, well, being 36 now, and it's the year 2022, which means I was born in 1986, means that during the Chris Moneymaker poker boom era of 2002 to 2004-ish range, uh, I was in high school. And I think many people my age uh, experienced that, saw that. And if, you don't, if you're not familiar with the Chris Moneymaker poker boom, if you don't know poker, that was when 2003, when ESPN gave a lot of focus and attention on the World Series of Poker. Chris Moneymaker, it was an accountant, just a rec player, won it. And then it just blew up in popularity. Next thing you know, everyone was playing poker. No Limit Texas Hold'em was the thing to do. The casino started spreading more games. Online poker was legal everywhere at the time. So there was this huge poker boom. That's how myself, my friends and I, we got into it because we had just, we were teenagers, uh, just turning 18, able to go to our local casino. So we were familiar with playing blackjack, table games, all that good stuff. And then of course, poker. Uh, most of my friend, myself, most of my friend groups, we were all athletes competitiveness uh liked the the hype excitement the thrill so like gambling poker all that stuff it, it, it checks all those boxes so we got into that so ever since then so for the good past uh for the past two decades i've uh been into poker poker player uh big hobby and it's continued throughout my college throughout my other careers and professions uh so that's that's where i stand now and I think the reason that I'm here talking with y'all is because Micah saw me playing at Hustler Casino Live, which is uh, the world's best poker live stream TV show that started just over a year ago. It happens at the Hustler Casino in L.A. So over the past, uh, since January, so the past 10 months, I've been playing out there regularly, flying from New York out to L.A. to play. And that's how Micah saw me. And uh, I guess he enjoyed what he saw. So that's why we're here today. So that's that's me in, in a nutshell right there. Yeah, sounds good. And have you been on Live with the Bike too, or is it mainly just Hustlers Casino? Yeah, good live. question. Um, I've only played. I have not. I have not played at Live with the Bike. I've played at Hustler Casino Live, and I played one time at Texas Car House in Austin before Hustler. So, uh, but mostly I've been pretty loyal to Hustler. I just really enjoy that. I enjoy the crew, the people there. They've been great to me. So I believe in just being being loyal to them as well, and I just enjoy it. the atmosphere. Uh, like I said, the Ryan Feldman, Nick Vertucci, the rest of the staff productions, the ones that don't steal, that is, uh, they are, they've been fantastic to me. So yeah, I've always gone back there. I just enjoy that. Appreciate it. Comfort. Um, so yeah, that's where I've been. Yeah. And how did you, how did you end up on that one? Like, did you, did you uh, know Ryan Feldman or something or? Sure. Good question. And no, I didn't know any of those people other than just watching them at live at the bike, like probably you and a lot of these listeners have over the past few years. Um, back in last January, last December, 2001, yeah, end of the year, I just reached out to, I saw that they were started the streaming thing. I knew that te uh, Texas w was, was doing uh, streams as well. I just reached out to them, DM them on social media, I think Instagram and said, uh, Hey, here's my, my resume of who I am. I'm coming out to the area. I'm a DJ, blah, 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 action player. You know, would you have me on? And luckily both uh, said, okay, sure. We'll give you a shot and I uh, put you on. And that first week I flew out to Texas, played in Austin, then flew out to LA, played at Hustler. And uh, I think after that, I just, I left a good impression with them. 
And fortunately, they allowed me to come back. And then a few sessions after that, then they kind of just gave me an open invitation, said, hey, we, we love what you do. You're a great personality, good action. Uh, boom. So now I think I've done over over a dozen of streams, I would say, in the last 10 months. And uh, yeah, it just feels like it feels like a second home. So, yeah, that's how how I got in. Yeah, and it seems like you're a very, you know, nice guy. Like from what I've seen of you on there, fun, friendly, you know. Um, good, you know, good person to be at the table with. And just to, just to like a note, we're, we're only going to have 40 minutes, I think, to record on Zooms. I don't have like the paid thing, but uh, sure. if you want, we can go do another one after that. But um, yeah, so yeah, you mainly just play like the, uh, the is it 5-5-100 five, five, game, right? Is that like the regular game you play? Sure, I've played. So I've played, well, now I've, after playing that big uh, Phil Ivey, Garrett, Eric Person, Andy Stacks game a couple weeks ago, that's the biggest one I've played by far. That was uh, one of their big special offs. Um, but mostly, though, I when I go, because I DJ on the weekends and my weekends are pretty much packed year round, I usually go out there from Sunday to like Wednesday or Thursday, which means I play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or a combination of those. Uh, halfway through their streams, they started the Max Payne Monday, which I really enjoy, which is it's always on Mondays. It's a uh, it's a 10, 20, 40, 10, 20, 40. No limit, 10K max buy-in. So it's the only show they have that's that's capped. You can't uh, buy in for any amount. Um, I enjoy that one a lot because it's a lot different atmosphere. It's fun. It's slow rolling is encouraged. The do seven game is mandatory. There's extra straddles. Needling was encouraged. So it's instead of just being a poker game, it's more like a reality TV show. That's what they bill it and advertise it as. So I like that personally because it allows the personalities and it's not about necessarily the poker play there. It's more about the personalities and the fun people getting to needle each other, do things that you wouldn't see at a normal poker game, playing poker. So I enjoy that atmosphere of it and it's a little bit uh, lower stakes so you can can be a little bit more splashy. And if you watch me play that, you know, my VPIP's usually over 50%, slow rolling, uh, playing cr silly hands, stuff that is very not GTO and definitely minus EV, but it's, it's fun, it's good tv it's good entertainment so i like playing that game a lot uh just the atmosphere because to me poker i don't play poker to make money i don't go to casinos or tables and put my sunglasses on and hoodie on and and don't say a word and just uh you know try to play perfect to win my no that's not fun for me at all uh it's social i like talking with people um and what you said that i seem like a nice genuine person yeah what you see on tv is is who i am for real and that's the same if you you talk to people that i play with here in local casinos around new york like that's who i was before the cameras were even rolling so social atmosphere is important to me uh back to your question about the other games so yeah then i've also played on uh the anti game which is what you just talked about the the five five hundred game which really plays more like a 50 100 game because if you straddle it goes to 200 uh opening raises are standard 300 400 range so it's, it's pretty much like a like a hundred dollar big blind game so there's that one and then uh wednesdays is uh, usually 25 50 or 25 50 100 um all these also the big blinds have an annie so if it's 25 50 it's also a 50 dollar annie big blind so you know they play a little bit bigger most of them are straddling and a lot of action so yeah those are the and those are all on cap so those are the games i've played and then of course that big ivy game that was uh 100k minimum buy-in and it, they brought in you know phil ivy andy garrett uh eric person uh ruske so that one was pretty big i was certainly taking a shot in that one i was severely short stacked i bought it for the table minimum which was 100 100 grand and uh, they all came in with way more there was like 2.5 million on the table or something uh i took a shot and it, it didn't it didn't work out so well but uh I lost money wise, but I feel like I won overall with the experience. So, and that was that was the night before the infamous big cheating hand with Robbie and Garrett, the Jack four off. Which, if you know anything about poker, then you've heard of this huge investigation. Right now, it's October sixteenth, which is we're just a few weeks out, and it's still, of course, investigation ongoing. It's the big been the biggest buzz in the poker world on Twitter and social media, and just uh, in the community. So, uh, depending on when. You, you the listeners are listening to this there may or may not have been some conclusion or uh some facts that came out but yeah so i know uh yeah i think i w answered more than what you asked in the question but yeah that's uh yeah that's the games i played there yeah so we might as well i kind of want to focus on those two things i guess um well first of all what are your thoughts of the whole um robbie garrett uh incident and then also since you played there a lot i think you know a lot of the people um 
how do you think they're handling it? And what do you have, have you ever met the guy who supposedly or not supposedly he did steal the eighteen thousand dollars or whatever? What I mean, that, yeah, that, that just 000. added a whole nother yeah layer to that story, man. And it's like my, my Twitter feed right now is just nothing but just poker, poker, poker. It's just going crazy non-stop poker. right yeah yeah and now garrett was just in like the la times or whatever with an article right so it's getting it's almost like hitting like mainstream it seems like you know what i mean oh it, oh it definitely is yeah. yeah there's people outside of poker that are covering it now uh yeah. news outlets all over the country um and it, it's it's yeah it's nuts it's crazy like you said twitter feeds blowing up like nuts uh like crazy my thoughts on it is that i'm a firm believer in not coming to conclusions without hard evidence or supporting when i look when i think about that and everything i know about poker and all the it, it does seem very fishy the whole situation and i feel like there's two although a lot of the evidence is circumstantial there's so much of it that makes it very tough to believe that everything is just a coincidence and just happened uh the hand obviously is one of the most controversial fishy things that just doesn't make sense robbie is her she just doesn't seem like a very smart person. So her stories, her words, her ability to tell a story, if she was cheating, which then if you're cheating, you have to be able to fabricate a story to make it believable, right? Is, I mean, I think she's failed on that many, uh, many times. I feel like there's, there's something fishy going on there, but I will not say definitive. Oh, she was definitely cheating unless a confession came out or there was hard evidence that proved that they were definitely cheating. You know, I've gone over the different options of if they were cheating, how would it be done? What's the realistic uh, possibility of that? So yeah, it just feels like that there's something there, but I think we still just need to see this and see what the investigation uh, says. And there's a good chance, and I think Nick Vertucci even said this himself, that after all is said and done, it's going to be very tough to prove it one way or the other definitively it's probably gonna be somewhere in between where it's gonna be like well here are the facts here are the findings come up with your own conclusion so there might not be closure in this ever so we will see part, second part of that question brian brian s brian sags the ball I, I forgot i don't know how to say his last name the the, the staff employee who got caught cheating the or sorry got caught stealing the fifteen thousand dollars the three five thousand dollar chips off i did know him yeah um, I had many interactions with him, both in person and on social media, as I did with many of, well, pretty much all of the Hustler Casino family, all the the back end people, the video production, the technical director. Yeah, I just got very friendly with them. And um, in terms of Brian, yeah, we, I, I never really, I, like, I never went out to dinner with him or had drinks, but we, when I'd get there and before the, the stream would start, yeah, he would assist with uh, um, with the microphones and different production aspects. And, you know, sometimes on social media, when I would post things, I would tag all their crew and he would message me, comment on some of my stuff. So nothing super in depth, but it was always positive interactions. It was always great. Uh, I, I, yeah, we never really got into anything more than that, but, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's my extent of relationship with Brian and what I knew about him. And so then when I found out that he was stealing chips, um, stealing money, doesn't surprise me i didn't think he's someone that would do that i'm just like oh okay I, i'm sure a lot of people would do that and i didn't know anything about his backstory or history about kids or financial problems or troubles with the law or motives that would want someone to cheat but i do know that in casinos and the poker world and just life in general people when it comes to money regardless of what they are facing money is is a very big dr uh, motive for people to do shady shit and do things that uh, would be breaking the law, would go against morals and integrity. And yeah, so I'm sure people steal all the time. And, and I would not be surprised if it comes out that this Brian kid uh, guy, I should say guy, well, I guess he's kind of a kid. He's younger than me, uh, that if he was doing it more, uh, stealing more. Because I mean, typically people that do this, when they get caught doing a crime, it's, it's, it's usually not their first time with something like this. Uh, so, and I just think overall for him to steal 15,000, which is a lot on one of the most popular, biggest viewed streams, even though it happened right when the cameras went off, there's just so much focus and attention on that, especially after the controversy with the hand that it just doesn't seem like that was a, a first time. Oh, let me just grab these chocolate chips. It's probably something where you start, you, you grab a hundred dollar chip here or there, and then it's, it's, I'll grab $200 chips and then I'll grab a thousand dollar chip, right? 
I'm not saying that's what he did or I, no one's ever told me that. I was just thinking in my mind of like the progression of what criminals usually do and people that steal. And so, yeah, that's that's my thought there. And I don't know. I'm not going to say that he and Ra- he was involved at all with this cheating. It could be a big coincidence that it, this all just happened at the same time. But uh, again, we'll see what the investigation says. And it just seems fishy that so many of these things are coming together. Then you have the bean stuff, the Nick Airball stuff. And it's a lot. And I, I just hope we get some conclusive evidence here sometime soon. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about the, you said the bean stuff or the Nick Airball stuff. I don't know too much about that. I heard about the um, DGAF stuff. Yeah. A little bit about that. But what's going on with the Nick airball and the what'd you say bean beans the the player beans and same okay. with dg dgaf yeah uh so they all got brought into it um a few days after it happened when garrett posted the the thing on two plus two which i'm sure you read right with all i didn't his... read the whole thing just because it, it was long right it but was I long skimmed yeah. it yeah 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 he talked about robbie he talked about that but in it he mentions beans which is the player that I played with on Max Payne Monday a couple days before the cheating thing happened. And Beans was has been a regular the last few months on Max Payne Monday and playing a lot of Hustler, a fan favorite because he was high action. Uh, he, he comes from Vegas. Um, but I didn't, I, I didn't know him until that week when I played with him finally for the first time. Uh, his connection to everything was he's the one that brought Robbie and the RIP Jacob Rip onto the show a few weeks before. I guess the story is he met them in – at the bike or another casino or something and said, Oh, Hey, you'd be great. Let me see if I can get you on. I'll introduce you to Ryan Feldman and you'd be great for the, the stream. So he got on, but then there were some things like the night I played with beans on the max pain Monday, a few days before the, the Jack forehand, he got a $20,000 in chips from Robbie um, beforehand. And then at the time of this investigation, he said how he hadn't paid it back yet. So people were just tying these connections. Like, all right, there's cheating allegations. This guy brings these people on uh he's he he's getting money from them and then people start digging on his history and he's got i guess he's got a, a past history with the law and different um possible scamming schemes things like that so again uh my interaction with beans was he was he was fun we were we played together it was fine i don't know anything about the rest of this stuff or his history and uh, with that so uh, i know he's been very vocal uh, the last couple of weeks of going on joey ingram's podcast slot making statements commenting on twitter about defending himself and the truth. So again, here, there, uh, Nick airball, who is actually someone that I really like. He's a, he's a hustler, Ray. He plays on the show a lot. Um, he got implicated apparently because the day, the night before the cheating hand, he went out to dinner with Robbie and rip who he had just met. Uh, and they spent like seven or eight hours at a bar, just shooting the shit and rips like, yeah, I'll get you a uh, UFC t- or boxing t- t- tickets or UFC, whatever it was to go watch Jake Paul or somebody else. And so like, they just had this instant friendship. They connected like a lot of poker players do, I think when they just are there and they talk to other poker players, whatever. And then the, the day of he gave, he gave a low 175,000 in chips at hustler chips to Rick to help play. And this is all documented. These are facts. And, uh, and then he got paid back after the show, but then the whole thing of like, all right, well, who, who's this Nick? What's he doing here? These people he just met, spending all his time giving a very, very large sum of chips to, oh yeah, just uh, you can go play the paying back. So, um, I, I believe Nick is 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 innocent here. He had a he he did a great job of uh, explaining everything, and uh, I think he was just being a little too um, generous. But again, it's just the implications of well, why is this person in this situation in the first half and then DGAF uh, Billy's his name. Some of that I very respect. I respect very much. And I like a lot. I've played with him a ton now on stream. He, he, he plays every max pain Monday. He's got that podcast called sessions, which is one of the most genuine raw poker podcasts. And it, it, it is about poker, but it's a lot about his life. I don't know if you, any listeners ever listened to that, but it's called sessions. It's great. So I've been following him and getting into his life for a number of, of months before all of this. I uh, love the guy and I love playing with him and battling like he, yeah, it, uh, it, it's great on the max play Monday. Cause we can heckle each other, go after, go after each other. And it, it, it's, it's, it's enjoyable. And it's fun. Uh, but he got, then people started on this witch hunt of uh, accusing him of cheating now. Cause he sits in the same seat every Monday that Robbie sat in. And uh, it was just a, lo- a lot of bogus stretch stuff that people were just trying to find and make these conclusions. Uh 
So I think he did a good job of clearing his name. I don't think he was cheating at all. Uh, if you listen to one of his recent podcast sessions, he did actually did a two-parter where he explains everything, answers all the questions. And I, th- I feel like it's been dropped there. No one else is really coming after him uh, as far as I know for now. So uh, hopefully he can, uh, you know, I think it's just unfortunate because a lot of these people involved, whether they are guilty or not guilty, um, so many people have been just attacking their their images, their names, their characters. And when people share just untrue facts or stuff that's not checked or things that are just so circumstantial speculation that they retweet and then people are like, oh, that's got to be true, right? I don't know if you feel the same way, Micah, but with this investigation, if, if seeing all the the craze about it, it felt a lot, it felt like a lot like the uh, the presidential election. And I hate getting into politics. I'm not a fan of that. But the comparison is very true. There was people that were so much on both sides and sharing so much untrue stuff or things that were not really <laughs> or very biased, but not true facts. And that painted in a different picture on, on both sides. Right. And that's what kind of what it felt like with this. There was just a lot of stuff. And unfortunately, what that meant was that people, innocent people or people that were getting unfairly accused of things and just, uh, you know, kind of a, a shitty situation for them. So. Yeah, that's my my rundown on that. Yeah, the way that I look at it is kind of like what you said in the beginning was like, you know, you're innocent till proven guilty. And I felt like it was like an immediate kind of attack on Robbie from a lot of people, even like high name pros like Tom Dwan is like for some reason, like posting a ton and other people like him. Yeah. And it's like she hasn't been proven guilty. For all we know, she's just some fish with a lot of money who just – didn't know what she was doing. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like, I I personally think that she is innocent. And I also think that it looks, if she's is innocent, it's going to look really bad. in a lot of people who are saying that she's cheating when it's like a, what second or third time on there. It just, in my opinion, it's just going to look bad. And then also with like, I under kind of, I think there's a good aspect to Doug Polk and Matt uh, Berkey and those types of people like going on and talking about it a lot. And even Ingram, one thing with Ingram is I think he's, extremely unbiased which is good but like with Berkey recently saying they should shut it down I think that's that's out of his lane in my opinion like if people know what's going on and if they're willing to go play on there I don't know if you're going to be playing on there anytime soon or if even if you have after the incident but like if people are willing to go play on there with what's happened and they're obviously even more they're checking up on things even more now you know what I mean so That should just be people's choice. I don't think Berkey has the right to say or anybody that they should shut it down. In my opinion, I think they're going a little too hard on that. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I agree with you there. And I, I'm being a poker fan. Uh, I do respect and enjoy a lot of the insights with Berkey, with Doug Polk, with Joy Ingram. I know they put a lot of time and effort into it, and I think they're all like good personalities. They're entertaining. They help deliver and get to the bottom of things, bring people on, get raw, honest things. And, and for, I get, I would agree for the most part, they're all pretty non-biased. And um, I, I, I think with with yeah, I don't with, think Polk is that unbiased. I think he has some sort of, um, you know thing he wants is I, I don't know i think he wants to get clicks in a lot of situations but yeah. sure Berkey, so for gonna, the most part is yeah anyway. yeah i was, I was gonna yeah. say for, yeah for, for this one correct i i do agree yeah. they all have some uh i think getting into it yes they all have their own motives behind like berkey he's he's uh, alive he's on the live at the bike uh opening montage right he, i think he's got some connections there so when he i know that he's got a history before of kind of some people would say that he's talking down a hustler or he speaks to like, you know, you know, trying to, to bring it down. Maybe it's cause he's got a better tie with bike with the bike. I know he does play at a hustler too. And he said he wants to go back. Um, Doug Polk, certainly that he owns the lodge, which is a, a competitor for the hustler. But I feel like this investigation, the stuff he's done has been pretty good with that because overall here, if there's issues with streaming and safety and cheating, then it affects the whole community, right? So all the streams are definitely someone that had to come together and, and figure this out. Uh, and then, yeah, of course, Jory and Grimm. Yeah, I do agree that they are in it also for the clicks, for the follows, for the views. So certainly there's, there's a lot of clickbait stuff. Um, so yeah, that's that's how, how that goes. Uh, I had not played there since, the incident but i'm going back in two weeks so i'll be back halloween night i'm actually co-commentating halloween night on max pay monday and then playing the next day the tuesday so i got a couple days out to, to get out there and then uh my wedding season here which is the busiest time for me djing wise ends uh at, at the at the end of this month <clears throat> in november uh 
I'll be going out to Vegas a couple times for DJ conferences. So I've got a lot of travel going on in November um, for, for conferences and whatnot. But hopefully in the, the winter months, early spring, I'll have more opportunities to go back to L.A. more, play more poker before my wedding season then um, ramps up again. So, yeah. Okay, cool. And then in terms of the actual playing, what are some of you, – you've said you played with Phil Ivey and Garrett and Andy, which is – you know, those are all three – huge names and legends great yeah. great players in the game um yeah i guess just speaking on that game how was it playing with with legends like that you kind of went sure. over it a little bit and did, so did you you bought it for a hundred thousand which is a lot and then you lost and that was it or is that <clears throat> yeah yeah so yeah going to that game so the way that came about was the week before so this was the game was on uh what, september 28th yeah um that wednesday so a few weeks before, as I always do, when I plan on making my trips to LA, I talked to Ryan Feldman, one of the owners, and he's the one that puts all the lineups together. I said, hey, I'm coming back uh, this week. I'd like to play Monday, Wednesday, et cetera. So that's what I had and they set up already for weeks. And then the week before I was supposed to go, I saw him posted, oh, breaking news, Phil Ivey's coming back into town next Wednesday and Thursday for these super high stake games. And that Wednesday was the day I was supposed to play. So then I mess- excuse me, messaged him and said, hey, What's going on here? Can I get a seat possibly? I mean, I was originally scheduled to play like the 2550 game where you know, I'd buy in for like uh, you know, 20, 30 grand, something in that range. So obviously playing here was going to be a bigger shot. I'd never played a, a game that high before. So uh, a few days, he's like, hey, let me let me see. I'll get back to you because I know they were trying to put a, together a really strong lineup with a lot of uh, big names and in terms of the poker world streaming you know i'm i'm pretty low on the totem pole compared to some of the people that they were going to be bringing in so i had to kind of just wait and see fortunately enough uh they let me in so i played um yeah there was 100k minimum buy-in uh that's what i i took a shot that i was going with i had no extra rebuys i sold some of my action i still have the majority of myself but i did sell a little bit just to uh to limit the risk and of course um so we went in there I knew that I was going to be short stack and that I would have to hopefully get a good run of cards. But I mean, anyone that's played poker, you've seen it before. You've seen that that idiot that's never played before at the one, two game, run it up to 2000 and be like, what the hell's happening here? And right. So it can happen. And, you know, even with that, I'm not a poker pro. I feel like my knowledge and skills of the game are still pretty decent uh, enough to certainly hold my own. I think the biggest thing was just the, the, the the money aspect of it because they all bought like a person half a million garrett half a million at least i think he had like 800 added on pretty quickly andy 300 400 something like that phil ivy 300k whatever there was there was a lot on there so i was certainly the the david and the goliath um and then yeah early on i knew that i was gonna have to play tight and i've never bought into a poker game before where i was the shortest stack because typically if i'm playing one three two five five ten these other games is that i'm like the Eric person or the, the Garrett that's going to try to be bullying people around and using the, that to my advantage and leverage, which uh, so it was definitely an adjustment for me to be on the other side of it. And that's something that I haven't really practiced much at all, if ever. Uh, so got in there, didn't really get too many cards, made a couple decent plays. I felt like things were going well, tried to pull off a, um, a pretty big bluff in a spot that I just thought would work almost every time in this guy. Uh, so I didn't even really have any big hands with any of the, the big studs of the game. It was more, I had a, my biggest hands with Dustin, the, his name, uh, he's like a business investor dude on Instagram, Dustin, the closer, I think is his, I never played with him before, but he must be rich. Uh, so biggest hand I had with him was $137,000 pot where I, I bluffed, I had queen eight of diamonds, um, I see the time is here, Mike. I see the time is is stopping. Or you want to do that? I'll let my dogs in real quick, and then we can restart the the recording. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. If um, it was on you, yeah. can you hear me now? I can. Okay. So if you want, we can just wrap. Or do you just want to? Okay, we can just end it here. That's fine. We'll restart. So if you guys want, just come uh, listen to the next episode. We're just going to restart it, or I'm just going to like stitch this, stitch them two together. Yeah, I was going to say that'd be easiest. Yep. All right, sounds good. I'll um, restart. Give me 15 seconds to let my dogs in, and then I'll just resend the link. Yep. Okay.